Hey, boys and girls, this is Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell's Math. Today we're going to be talking about mean absolute deviation. Okay, our essential question, or what I want you to know by the end of the video, is how can you determine and use the mean absolute deviation? What I decided to do was go ahead and, and just kind of break this term down uh, into its, its root words, and maybe we can try to remember what this means uh, if we know what each word kind of stands for. So I, I said mean, in this case, we're talking about the average. All right, we've already talked about this in the first part of the chapter. Mean means average. All right, and the second word is absolute, and this is re kind of referring to absolute value, but not in the sense that we're looking for the distance between uh, a number and zero, okay? We're looking for the distance between a number and the mean or the average, okay? And then deviation, how far from the average is the entire data set, okay? And it's, it's, we're talking about spread, and we're going to get that into that in the next slide. All right, so we're trying to understand what mean absolute deviation is. So we have a measure of variability, and that's what we're talking about here is variation, variability, whatever. It's, an, it's a single number used to describe the spread of a data set, how far apart is the biggest number in the data and how far apart is the smallest number in the data. Okay, that's the spread. So one measure of variability that we're going to use, and this is the main one we're going to talk about, is the mean absolute deviation, or MAD for MAD, um, which is the mean of the distances. So it's the average of the distances between the data value, okay, each one of the pieces of data, and the mean, or the average of the data set. Okay, so here's an example. It says the data represents the height in feet of various buildings find the mean absolute deviation for each data set. Okay, so here we have uh, a number of values and we want to try to find out the mean absolute de of deviation of that data. All right, so we're going to calculate the mean and we're going to round to the nearest whole number. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and uh, calculate the mean. That's the first, first thing we're going to do. So I want to take uh, my values and I want to go ahead and, and figure out the mean. So I'm going to say 60. All right, guys, here I'm just adding my numbers up and coming up with my average. Okay, and I'm going to divide that by how many pieces of data there are. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to divide by 10. All right, and if I add all these numbers up and I divide by 10, I'm going to get 59. Okay, so that's the mean of the data. So the next thing I want to do is come down here and use my mean, use my average, and find out how far each one of these numbers is from that mean. Okay, so for example, 60. How far is 60 from 59? Well, it's just one away. All right, 58 is also one away. 54 is five away, 56 is three away, 63 is four away, 65 is six away, 62 is three away, 59 is dead on, that's zero away, 56 is three away, and 58 is one away. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way it is, all right, 58 is less than 59, but it's only one away from 59. 62 is more than 59, but it's three away, all right, we're talking about distance here, so they're all positive. Okay, so now I want to take all these numbers that I have and I want to add them together and divide by how many I have. And that's going to give me my mean absolute deviation. So I'm going to say 1 of um, distances here. Uh, I know I'm going to divide by 10. All right, and that's going to give me a mean absolute deviation of 3. Okay. So that tells me the variability of this data set is 3, which is, you know, that's pretty low. It's hard to determine if that's low or not unless we have some other data to compare it to. Okay, maybe um, the buildings in this city, you know, have a mean absolute deviation of 3, but the buildings in another city have a mean absolute deviation of 5. That means there's a, a greater variability in the size of the buildings, you know, versus, you know, the first city. So that's what we're talking about. Okay, so let's look at an example. This is two waiters at a cafe each serve 10 large fruit smoothies. All right, and I'm up here reading. 
the amount in each large smoothie is shown below. So we got some, some data here. Which waiter smoothies showed less variability? Okay, so which, which waiter basically show, um, made smoothies that were um, closer to, to the average? Okay, so he, he, he probably wasted less material or gave their, their customers the money's worth. All right, so the first thing we have to do is, this is A. All right, so I'm going to do A. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a mean. That's the first thing I have to do. So I say 19.1. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Well, it tells me right there, 10. All right, so I know I'm going to divide by 10. So if I take all that and I divide by 10, I'm going to get approximately a mean of 20 ounces per serving, or 20 ounces per, per yeah, per serving, I guess. All right, so now I want to find the mean absolute deviation. So I'm going to take my, my value of 20 right here, and I'm going to find out how far away each one of these servings is from 20. So 19.1 is 0 0.9 away from 20. 20.1 20 is 0 0.1. I'm going to add these as I go. 20.9 is 0 0.9 away. 19.6 is 0 0.4 away. That's a 0. 20.9 is 0 0.9. 19.5 is 0 0.5. 19.2 is 0 0.8. 19.4 is 0.6, 20.3 is 0.33, and 20.9 is 0.9. So I have to do the same thing here. I have to add all these pieces of data up, and then I divide by 10, and that gives me my mean absolute deviation. So if I do that, I'm going to go ahead and write right there, divide by 10, and what that gives me is a mean absolute deviation of 0.6. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one, let's change colors. I have to add, I'm going to write all these down again, 20. By 10. Okay, and just come to find out, I also get 20. Okay, so the mean of both of these is 20. Now I rounded to 20, so I think uh, the top one was a little bit more or a little bit less, I had 19.99, so I just rounded it to 20, and the bottom one was like 20.01 or something, so I just rounded it to 20. But on average, they're both 20. So let's find out what the differences are here. So I'm going to keep this in red so you can see my numbers. But 20.1 from 20 is 0 0.1. 19.6 from 20 is 0 0.4. 20 from 20 is 0. 20.5 is 0 0.5. 19.8 is 0 0.2, 20 is 0, 20.1 is 0 0.1, 19.7 is 0 0.3, 19.9 is 0 0.1, and then 20.4 is 0 0.4. All right, so if I add all those together and I divide by 10, I wind up with um, 0 0.2. All right, so what that tells me is that the mean absolute deviation or my, my variability between um, waiter one and or waiter A and waiter B is that this guy, waiter A, has more variability. Okay, there's a greater variability in the uh, amount that he puts in his shakes, while waiter two has less variability. That means he's more consistent with what he puts in his shakes. So that's the big difference here. Okay, so that's when we can actually compare the two numbers and see which guy's doing a better job because the averages were the same, right? So they're both on average putting 20 ounces in there, but that's not what we're looking for. We want to find out who's doing a better job, okay? And this guy is doing a much better job, a waiter B at, at 0 0.2, all right? So that's it, boys and girls. Uh, make sure you answer all the questions.